It's that time of the year again. Holiday shopping season is almost upon us, and many of you this year are likely to be gifting or receiving a bike. And odds are, a lot of those bikes are going to be coming from Walmart because they sell more than anyone. Last year around this time, I made a video with five tips for buying a big box bike. And today I'm going to revisit that, but with a twist. This time I'm going to focus solely on Walmart bikes. And being that a year can change a lot of things, I'm going to be mentioning some items that you can focus on to possibly maximize your purchase. Every year for about a week or two after Christmas, I see adults pushing cruiser bikes up the hills around my neighborhood. And I've spoken to a few of them, and they didn't know that you could get the same style bike, but in a 7-speed configuration. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me try to explain. Walmart cruiser bikes come in two configurations. One is a single speed and the other is a seven speed. You can denote the seven speed by looking on the handlebars and seeing if there's a shifter at the right grip. And believe me when I tell you that those seven speeds can make a world of difference with how much fun and how relaxing the ride can be if you have any hills. Now if you live in a perfectly flat area, a single speed is fine. But sadly and all too often when it comes to buying a cruiser, most people focus in on the color or trying to make decisions like what would Jimmy Buffett do. I also need to mention the Huffy Cranbrook Cruiser. The Cranbrook normally costs between $79 and $89, yet for some reason recently the price has increased to $98. At $98 for the Cranbrook, you're only $1 away from the Hyper Cruiser that I believe is built slightly more robust. So you may want to browse the shelves at this price point and get the bike that's going to be the best value for you. Let's talk about mountain bikes. Aside from bikes for young children, I believe mountain bikes are Walmart's most popular bicycle. And I think it's also safe to say that during the holidays, most of these are purchased as gifts. And Walmart mountain bikes are typically priced in blocks, with bikes being more or less similar with only small differences. At least within their same price range. Take these two bikes. They're priced almost identical, and the only real difference between the two is the color of the graphics and the shifters. Both these bikes have the same full suspension setup, but one has generic twist shifters and the other has Shimano Revo shift shifters. If it were me, I would take the one with Revo shift. You'll see a variety of twist shifters on the lowest priced mountain bikes at Walmart, though for the most part they all do work roughly the same, though I do think the Revo is the best of the lot. And while we're talking about the same, let's talk about the front suspension forks. Now don't get caught up in whatever the graphics tell you. In the same price blocks, these are usually the same fork with only subtle cosmetic differences. Now before anyone comments about some oddball bike with a great fork, there are exceptions, but on the shelf bikes, pretty much they're all the same. And that also extends to the drivetrains. If it says 3x7, it's going to have the same riveted 3x crank set and the same 14-28 to tooth freewheel. And 99% of the time on bikes in this price range, you're also going to have Shimano flat face derailleurs, which I'm not a fan of. They do work, and there are worse options, but they rule the roost at these low price points. That being said, we're starting to see a bit of a trickle down when it comes to bike components. So check the shelves to see if there's a similar bike with a Torni derailleur. These are slightly better and they're starting to appear. Another component you'll see a lot on Walmart shelf bikes is rim brakes. Now this is an example of poorly adjusted rim brakes, but ones that in my opinion have a proper braking surface on the wheel. But more often than not, you're going to see this on a Walmart bike. A rim brake on a painted wheel set. This is almost guaranteed to make the bike sound like a dying seal. You'll also see a few bikes with disc brakes, which is good, but take a closer look because more often than not, they'll have them on a rack with that front disc brake shining in the store lights, only to conceal a rear rim brake in the back. Now there's nothing wrong from a functional perspective in having a mismatched brake set, but be sure you check the bikes around it because there may be a bike in the similar price range that has dual disc brakes. You'll also want to inspect the wheels to make sure that they're not too badly warped because most are, some excessively, and in my opinion that can be dangerous. Bikes with mag wheels are especially susceptible to this and they can't be trued as far as I know. You also want to check the handlebars to make sure that they're on the bike type because it's all too common that I see this when I'm in my local Walmart. As a matter of fact, I know a guy that worked at a local Walmart. He assembled bikes one night and they told him to leave them loose because it discouraged people from riding the bikes in the store. And they don't stop with loose bars, unfortunately, like here with loose shifters that have been twisted forward. And at least at my local Walmart, even when they tighten things down, they can be a bit off. Finally, and most important from a shopping perspective, is don't shop only in-store. Compare what you see with the Walmart website, because sometimes things are different. For example, let's look at the Schwinn Aluminum Comp. 
The aluminum comp on the shelves in my local Walmart stores is $198 and it has a disc front brake but a rear rim brake. Yet on the Walmart website, the aluminum comp is not only $10 cheaper but it's also a cool silver and it has dual disc brakes. By the way, review coming soon, hopefully by the end of the year. While you're on the website, also check for bikes that might not be stocked in your local Walmart but are still available. Like the Hyper Hydroform, it's under $200, decently specced, and I've even had some success with upgrading it. Regardless of what you buy or who it's for, I hope this video's helped you out and possibly helped you save a little money and maybe even put a smile on someone's face. Thanks for watching. If you're not already, I hope you subscribe and have the notification bell active so you can catch my future reviews, like the upcoming review on my first e-bike. Have a great day.